My name is Helen Boff and I write picture books like this one, The Spots and the Dots, illustrated by Marion Deschars and very recently published by Anderson Press. So to celebrate the launch of this book, Marion and I are here today to share a story time and some drawing activities with you. So thank you very much for joining us. Hello, my name is Marion Deschars and I'm an illustrator and I illustrated this book by Helen called The Spots and the Dots. Um, I'd like to show you how to draw some of these spots and dots. They're very easy to do, there's red ones and blue ones, and they live in little pods on one side of the hill. And if we get time, we can even try and maybe draw some monsters. So the spots and the dots. Now, before I read the story, I just want to show you something about this book. It's a little bit unusual because it has two covers. One side with a big red spot on the front and one with a big blue dot on the front. And that's because inside we have the story from the dots side of the story. And the other way up, we have it from the spots side of the story. So the middle of the book is actually the end of both stories and you can read it either way up. So to see which side we're going to read today, I thought I would spin my special spotty, dotty coin. Okay, let's spin and see whose story we're going to hear today. the dots side of the story. The Spots and the Dots by Helen Boff and Marion Deschars. On one side of a hill a long time ago lived a small tribe of dots in pods round and low. The little dots all loved to bounce very high. Some of them sometimes bounced up to the sky. But as they bounced further and further away, the mummies and daddies had something to say. Remember our rule, you know the drill, whatever you do, don't go over the hill. The little dots had heard this warning before, 233 times, maybe more. Their parents, when they were small, had heard it too. And their parents' parents, the words were not new. If you go over the hill, said the dots, you will be taken away by the spots. Nobody knew what the spot tribe would do, but everyone knew spots were bad through and through. The dots started playing their favourite game. Battle the bad spots and win was its name. They played that they fought for a day and a night. With dots beating spots at the end of the fight. The glory belonged to the dots big and small. But where was the littlest dot of them all? Oh no, Baby Dot was on top of the hill, looking so scared, staying so still. But small Baby Dot was not there all alone. Another small someone was there on their own. Help! 
said the someone. I'm scared of the dots. The dots, said Baby Dot. Don't you mean spots? No, I'm a spot and scary I'm not. Me neither. I'm friendly and I am a dot. The dot and spot babies both stared in surprise as the world started changing in front of their eyes. Nobody wanted to take them away, so over the hill was a safe place to play. The two babies bounced up and down in delight, then rolled down the hill from their very great height, and they told everybody as fast as they could, that the bad ones were not bad at all. They were good. From that day onwards, they played and laughed lots. The spots and the dots and the dots and the spots. Now all could be friends. No one was scared. And the whole of the hill to the top could be shared. I hope you enjoyed that story and the way that the dots and the spots and the spots and the dots were all able to be friends in the end and share the whole hill. And now here's Marion. The Spots and the Dots by Helen Boff and Marion Ducharmes. Today I'm going to show you how to draw some of the characters in this book. They look very simple and they're very simple to draw. The, the spots are red and the dots are blue. So let's try. Now the only materials you'll need are some white paper, a pencil, and I'm using coloured pen, pens today, coloured felt tip pens. And these little things, which you can get from any stationers or art shop, are little white sticky dots. And I've got them in two different sizes. And that's all we're going to need today. So let's start by covering our page with red spots and blue dots. You can make these all different sizes and they don't have to be accurate. Next, we're going to add some eyes, and this is where I'm going to use these little white stickers, and there's two different sizes. So the smaller spots and dots, I can use the small circles, and we'll put those, you can put them anywhere on these shapes, there's no right or wrong. Next, I'm going to add the pupils of the eyes. And in this way, we can give them all different expressions. Because if we make the eyes, the pupil very small, it makes the spots of the dots look very surprised. If we make them very big, and we add a smile, it can make them look very happy. So you can add the black pupils to all the different spots and dots. Next, I'm going to add their mouths. Now, some of them are from the side view, so we're going to do a smile from the side or a surprise look from the side. Some are looking unhappy and some are happy. Now, 
Now you might be wondering, if you're a spot or a dot, how do you get around if you don't have any legs? Well, the good thing about the spots and the dots is they bounce everywhere. And I'm going to show you a way of, sh of drawing something that makes them look like they're bouncing. You take your black pen and you can make like a spring shape beneath them. And that looks like they're jumping high into the air. You can also do marks like this, and that also looks like they're jumping in the air. Or you can put the marks around them, like this, and it looks like they're moving. So continue with those. And another very clever thing to do, for those that are not jumping around, that are on the ground, you take a pencil, any pencil, and you make a little shadow where they're sitting. So this can just be very lightly drawn in and suddenly you can see it looks like they're sitting on the ground. So if we put some of the ones at the bottom, we make them look as if they're on the ground by doing that. And there we have some spots and dots. Jumping around. See if you can make some now. The Spots and the Dots by Helen Boff and Marion Dishars. Now in this book, there's a rather scary monster that I'm going to show you how to draw today. And this monster is really just in the imagination of one of the dots. So when we make up a, a, um, an imaginative monster, we can make him however we like. So your monster might not look exactly like this, but there's a couple of tips I'm going to show you how to make your, your monster look very scary. Now, all you need is some white paper and some coloured pencils, coloured pens. And then we'll begin. So this monster looks a bit like a fire monster, I think. So we start making a fiery shape. Like that. And next we're going to make the eye shape, which is a bit shaped like a leaf in a way. It looks a bit like a leaf. And you can see he's already starting to look a little bit scary, but how we make a monster look very scary is by adding some very sharp teeth. Now I should colour colour him in. Now we're going to put his eye. I'm going to make it. Oh, he's actually quite scary looking, isn't he? Now, if we draw a dot looking up at him, we'll get an idea of how big he is. So we're going to put the dot here. I'll draw a small circle. Leave space for two eyes. And he has to look, or she has to look, like he's a little bit scared. So we'll have him looking up like that. I think he looks quite scared. And if we put a shadow underneath him, then we know he's on the ground. And the monster is floating above him. Now see if you can try your monster. So the things to remember with the monster is he has a scary eye and very sharp teeth. It's nearly time to go now, but we just wanted to say that we hoped you enjoyed this book and thank you very, very much for joining us and bye bye.